volcanic eruption in front of the Mirage in Las Vegas. No, not a natural disaster, an overture to the extraordinary, created behind the facade of the luxury hotel by German-born Siegfried Fischbacher and Roy Uwe Horn, better known as Siegfried and Roy. The exotic hotel complex emphasizes everywhere that it's very much the Siegfried and Roy place. For example, with the secret garden, home to rare animals like white tigers and white lions. If they're lucky, visitors can even rub shoulders with their stars. You know, it's a, it's a pride of white lines. Siegfried Fischbacher and Roy Uwe Horn have now been working together for almost 35 years. One of our dreams. Looking back, Siegfried says, if there's no such thing as coincidence, then meeting Roy was destiny. And Roy recalls that right from the beginning of their professional partnership, his ambition was for Siegfried to be the greatest magician of our age. You always stress that a magician should never reveal his secrets. That's a principle of magic. All the same, I'm going to try. Will you reveal the secret of your success? I believe we've been successful because we've always meant things honestly. We've never had hidden motives for doing anything. I think it's still possible to get ahead today by taking the straight road. What I'm trying to say is that Siegfried and Roy, our success, there may well be other people who are more successful, but that there's nobody who, this is the way I always put it, who can think like Siegfried and Roy. That's been a factor in our success. I always say it was hard to get going. We had a hard childhood. The start was difficult. In the middle it was difficult. And it's still difficult. But it took all the difficulty to enable us to get where we are today. But would what you've achieved have been possible without your difficult childhood? I don't think so. I think that gave us a lot of strength. And I say, if you've got an idol, you've got someone. I always say, my mother was that person. She got us through those difficult times. Sometimes it was tough. From outside, it must have looked tough. She had a hard shell, but we always had something to eat, from nothing. We always had something to wear, from nothing. And we always had a roof over our head. And we felt we were loved. She must have been a strong person. I believe we still benefit from that. And in the period after the war, none of us had anything. It was that kind of time. But the fact that we had nothing, that the world seemed black and white to us, perhaps that helped us to develop our imagination and our dreams. And that gave rise to our wishes for better times, for a brighter world, for more understanding with other people, for more harmony with nature. All that came from there. And perhaps it was fate that, in our chosen profession, as illusionists and magicians, we have created a world of illusion for ourselves that could be reality. For us, who started with nothing, the stage has always been our sandbox. It's where we can play, where we can achieve everything we set out to in life. But at first it was hard. Roy, here at the age of two, suffered under his stepfather, an alcoholic, and he developed a close friendship with his pet wolfhound bitch, Hexe. Once, Hexe even saved Roy's life. Siegfried's background was similar. His father was also an alcoholic. He and his brothers and sisters grew up without any parental love.
Roy was just 13 when he left home and became a bellboy and then a steward on a German ship. He even managed to smuggle his first exotic animal on board ship, Chico the Cheetah. It was at sea that their paths crossed. Siegfried, a ship steward who delighted passengers with his conjuring tricks. And Roy. The result? Their first animal illusion, on board a ship. Siegfried Fischbacher was born on June 13, 1939, in Rosenheim, in Bavaria. He left school early and trained as a carpet weaver. He was only 12 when, perhaps seeking recognition, he started performing conjuring tricks. A Rosenheim lad becomes an international star. What do you think about that? I think it's great. I know myself how difficult it is to get out of Rosenheim. I knew Siegfried as a boy, so I naturally followed his whole development. All I can say is super, great. Super und spitze. Their dexterity, it's fantastic the way they interact, and above all their feeling for their animals. I really admire that. As a boy, Siegfried fantasized a lot. One night, for example, he slipped into a theater in Rosenheim, switched on the floodlights, and dreamt of rapturous applause from his audience. I think it's great that he set himself a goal and achieved it. Even as a child, he said he wanted to become a really great magician, something I didn't consider possible. He said he wanted to be like the magician Bellachini. I never thought he'd get this far, but of course I'm proud that he's made his dreams come true. You thought it was just a passing whim? Yes, when he was young I saw him as an actor and a little magician, but I never thought anything more would come of it. It seemed the wrong time for that. Stage magic, variety shows and so on were dying out. I didn't think it had any future, but he had his hopes and worked hard. And well, you see what's become of him today. Magic offered Siegfried the chance to escape from his unhappy home, and he took every opportunity of appearing in public. We sometimes took part in his little acting ventures. I can still remember, he hung buckets on our necks, old pickled gherkin buckets. We used them as drums with two wooden sticks, and one bucket bore a sign saying, this afternoon the Fischbacher Theater, admission two pfennigs. All this happened over 40 years ago in Rosenheim. Although Siegfried now identifies himself completely with the American way of life, inside he's remained a German, a Rosenheimer. Rosenheim, it's still inside me, in the way I move, the way I speak, and the way I think. Only a Rosenheimer can think like Siegfried. Nordenham, 30,000 inhabitants, at the point where the river Weser flows into the North Sea a port and industrial town where Roy Uwe Horn was born on October 3, 1944, at Konnemannstrasse 52. His childhood was marked by countless family quarrels. He escaped by daydreaming. Today, he emphasizes that these flights into fantasy were healthy defense mechanisms. He made up stories, buried himself in books, and with his animals roamed the fields. And so, it was with mixed feelings that Roy entered this school in Nordenham, and he wasn't a good pupil. Roy was always a loner. He liked playing by himself. He played with his dog and his cat, and started doing conjuring tricks when he was still only 10 or so. Sometimes people said, oh, he's a bit of a show-off. But later it got around that he was doing this or doing that. He had a dog and a cat. Later we heard it wasn't all just make-believe, and that the pair of them are really very good. 
Roy will be glad to hear that because, like Siegfried, he always stresses that he's never forgotten his roots and still feels closely linked to his hometown. You can travel the whole world and you can take a German out of Germany, but you can never take the Germanness out of a German's heart. Germany will always remain my home and will always be a part of us.